Lisa Mbula Binaka and welcome to Speak Your Mind. Now, our episode this week, we've got uh, coming in from the Wheelbarrow Boys Association. He's the president, John Eva Kassa. A warm welcome to you, my friend. Thank you for coming to Speak Your Mind. Yes, and uh, we've also got with us interpreter, and uh, he's from our sister radio station, uh, Pena, who is from uh, Bula FM. This is Pena Ranima, who is going to be our interpreter today. Thank you, Pena. Okay, so wheelbarrow boys. This is our topic today, and uh, I'm sure we notice them working hard to make a living around certain bus stands uh, around the country. But uh, what I want to know is uh, when was the Wheelbarrow Boys Association first formed and whose idea was it? Minaka <coughs> Luis, what yes. uh, Mr. Chon is saying that he hails from the village of Matuku uh, in Lao. Right. And uh, he started off this uh, wheelbarrows association in 2007. Mm. He started off with 10 wheelbarrows. Oh. And after 20 years of service in the uh, civil service, when he retired, he thought of starting something so that, you know, it can back him up. Uh, for his remaining life they'll live. So he started off uh, with 10 wheelbarrows and uh, he went uh, right up to Chosef Angavindi who was the CEO of uh, Suva City Council at that time okay. and also uh, through the Minister of Women at that time mm -hmm. and uh, they discussed on uh, how to go about you know with the, the wheelbarrow uh, Bus I business. Mean business yeah, yes. wheelbarrow business. Right. So they told him that he's supposed to go through a workshop mm. uh, on how to start these new businesses. Okay, so that was the only way that he could actually start it, uh, to go through a workshop. So what kind of workshop was it? Can you ask uh, him? So uh, most the, 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 the workshop that they went to was basically on how to establish or start a business. A small business. And also they've learned a few things on customer service. Oh, that's really nice. So uh, when he did that, uh, obviously, uh, then uh, what was uh, the move after that? Mm. After the workshop, the one week long of workshop, mm. then they went with the, the police and also Minister of Women. Yeah. And from there, they gave them 20 wheelbarrows to start off uh, their business at that time. All right. So it was 20 wheelbarrows, and uh, that was really good getting it off the ground. Mm. But uh, he had actually started with 10, so that means that was 20 added on to the 10? 20, 20 added on. At that time, the, the 10 that he had, he has mm. given it to those who were using it, because at that time he didn't have a license. Oh, so, so he had 10, Yes. and 20 was given by 
after the uh, workshop. Okay, and then uh, they managed to get their licenses after that? Yes, so the government gave them license after that. Okay, so that's 12 years ago. That's uh, quite ago. a long time ago. Mm -hmm. So is he happy with uh, how the Wheelbarrow uh, Boys Association has come since uh, 12 years ago? Mm -hmm. He's been very happy ever since mm. they've started off uh, 12 years ago and until now. Yes. Uh, he's been running this association for nine years. Okay, nine yes. years. That's really nice. So, how does the Wheelbarrow Association operate? Yes. <laughs> So they say they, they have four bays all together. Okay. And this with is that, Suva? Or? This is Suva. Okay. Suva loan. They right. have four bays all together. Mm. With those four bays, they have a total of 100 wheelbarrows. Oh, that's a lot. Uh, yes. With, Ooh, uh, starting yeah. from 20. You starting know, from 20. 100. 100. So they have, they have 25 uh, wheelbarrows at the Western uh, bus station. They're based there. Yes. They I have, have noticed them yes. early in the morning when I come in. You see them, you know, they, they look really nice running with their wheelbarrows. I'm yeah. sure you've seen that too. And they have uh, 25 based at Jason Taram Supermarket. Wow. The burnt one, the uh, burnt uh, Jason Taram okay. Supermarket. They mm. have 25 at the old Loki uh, uh, shopping complex. Mm hmm. And they have uh, 25 again at the market door number five. So a total of uh, 100 wheelbarrows. That's excellent. Yeah, and I, I think, uh, you know, it's great work that uh, what the wheelbarrow boys do. I mean, they help out, help out people. But uh, we'll be back shortly on Speak Your Mind, Gold FM, only the classic hits. Welcome back to Speak Your Mind on Gold FM, only the classic hits. Thank you a lot for your sweet company. And uh, on this week's episode, we've got uh, the president of the Wheelbarrow Association. This is Chone Vakasa, who's been kind enough to come in and let us know how uh, busy they are and the great work that they do. And, of course, our interpreter from Bula FM, Pena. Mm. Thank you so much, uh, kindly, for being uh, our interpreter today, <laughs> Pena. <laughs> and, uh, yes, I mean... 100 wheelbarrows from 20, 12 years ago. And uh, I just wanted to ask a question also of um, hearing that they even have uh, their bank accounts and FNPF accounts as well, for some of them? Yes, they, they do have a bank account. Yeah. So each member deducts one dollar or gives one dollar towards the bank account. So this is how often? Every week. Every week. So right. weekly they deduct a dollar from each uh, wheelbarrow. Yep. And uh, FNPF, they bring in the FNPF uh, staffs to come and do workshops to them and tell them on what to do. Yeah. And it's up to them whether they want to uh, deposit in some money into uh, FNPF or yes. not. So it's surely up to them. So do wheelbarrow boys have to have a license? Okay. 
tu lichu na kaki tu do tis baka chilo mani maketi ambal tena tupat ina ni tu taku sui na gunchal pata kina ni tu bi. They have a license. Every wheelbarrow has to have a license, mm -hmm. and also they have to have a permit. So if if you see if you see a wheelbarrow in the streets, you'll see a number uh, on the side yes, of the wheelbarrow. Yes, I've seen that. Yes, that's the uh, permit that they have to have. Okay. So the government of the day mm. wants everyone to have license if they have to be a, a wheelbarrow and has to come into this uh, association. Okay. So why is that? Why did uh, they want them to have to have a permit? Nada pengen dewi kita mahu buat permit. Kalau pengen dewi kita buat buat permit, mungkin bertanya ni tu tak kosong ni sah. Kalau yang dia lakukan kan, yang dia itu kita bertanya so nak kaya itu ni buat dalam kaya itu ni tu tak kosong ni sah. Kalau kita lakukan tu nampak ni. Icu nak buat permit, cuma tengah nak nampak ni. Nak kaya nak itu lebih bertanya tentang apa ni ubi sah. Kalau dia buat apa cuma nak dia buat lagi cincu sah. The reason being why they need the permit is for the time when they cross uh, across the street eh? right. when, they, when they cross across the street mm. if anything happens an accident or something mm. it'll be easy for the police force to identify uh, which wheelbarrow who does the wheelbarrow oh, belong to I that's see. why they need permits and license uh, just because of you know things that could happen just for safety sake safety, well yes. i hope um, there hasn't been any accident but has there been any accidents involving wheelbarrow boys yeah. there haven't been any accidents oh so that's uh, good news but uh, i believe that they also work closely Closely with the Fiji police force. Mm. 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 People very close to me who have witnessed wheelbarrow boys being so helpful to the community. And I can give an example. Okay, just one. I'll start off with one. Is uh, when uh, someone is being robbed, a wheelbarrow boy actually catches that thief and takes them to the police post. Can you tell, uh, tell him about that? Mm. Ano ko ni kaman taka kung kaya nduwe mbuto ko dinon na nabawsi. Mbito tu o ko ni tanga ni ko na nabara. Medidi di ko ya mbuta ko ya. Sorry me ko mbuta ko. Lebis sa rakit na sa matanda ni lebis. Nasa parang dura yun tukin na. Nasa rin nga na labo na ko ay rambi yung nani tu besi tumba. Meron di parang rote kung kaya medidi di mo yilokia. Rato tawa ka rato chuan bas rato chuan man market. Kung kaya sambo sumba may sangole ba ng gobisan taram rato chumi kaya rosu buka lima nong. Kerana ni baru tengok nampak tumbuh mai, mereka kau mewarisi tu nabi sya. Naya tu cuma kerana ni baru mata kita nalo mani kono ni tovar. The main reason why they are stationed at these uh, locations, uh, Louis, is mm. to also help them in catching these, uh, you know, the, the, the thieves or those who steal from others. So that's why they they have been put at these certain locations, because these are the locations where most of these pickpocketers, uh, pickpocketers and thieves, yeah, they just grab the bags. Uh, yes, these are the the stations where the routes that they follow when they grab the bags. So when they're stationed at this place, they, they're not there for just the sake of being stationed. It's mm. there for a reason. That's yes. why they've been working closely with the police mm. force. They tell him that I really admire that work that the wheelbarrow boys do in protecting the community from, you know, people who just come up and grab your bag. Mm. Mm. So, um, I mean, it's, it's quite amazing that uh, they do this. It uh, makes uh, us feel really nice. I mean, some people, you know, don't really want to look at them, you know, in such a way. But my job today is to bring them up on that platform of uh, the job that they really do. So uh, just let him know that and maybe just ask him, have they caught uh, a lot of thieves? <laughs>
Yes, from the start they've been working closely with the police force uh, mm-hmm. in regards to uh, the, the robbers or the pickpocketers, mm-hmm. and uh, mostly they've seen that most of the women are also best yes. uh, in, in town. So what they do is they run up the buses whereby the, the, the person involved is in the bus or in the taxi. Mm. They just grab them and take them straight to the, the, the market police post. So they've done a lot and then they, mm. he has mentioned that, uh, yes, it has uh, quietly decreased now. Because of that, man, of fantastic. That, yes. Too good. I mean, this is what we need to know, how the wheelbarrow boys are protecting the community. And uh, they sure do need a medal for this. On Speak Your Mind... This is Gold FM, only the classic hits, and we'll be back shortly. Speak your mind on Gold FM, only the classic hits. Our guest, the president of the Wheelbarrow Boys Association, Chone Vakasa, and also our friendly interpreter, mm-hmm. and this is Bula <laughs> FM's Pena Ranima. Yes, he had to laugh anyway, <laughs> yes, because we're work colleagues. Anyhow, so we've been talking about uh, how they've been brilliant in protecting the community and, uh, you know, just catching all these horrible thieves. Imagine bashing a woman. Well, I, mm. I hope that, well, like, I shouldn't say that. But anyway, also, I've noticed that uh, they've helped people who've been sick, like, uh, you know, someone having a heart attack in the street. Wheelbarrow boys have been there to help them. Maybe you'd like to let him know about that as well. Yes, <laughs> Uh, Luis, they've uh, gone through trainings with the uh, Red Cross uh, in terms of uh, first aiding and uh, you know how to help uh, a, a person who suffers from uh, a sickness when they're in town, heart attack and other kind of sickness. And um, also seizures as well. Yeah, seizures yes. as well. So, yes, they, they've worked closely as well with Red Cross. They've gone through trainings mm. so that they can, you know, learn and know what to do if they come across someone who's, who really needs help at the time. Yeah, because um, I heard also from someone very close to me that uh, they saw the wheelbarrow boys assisting a man who had actually collapsed in town and they mm. went to the police post and got the transport and, you know, got him to hospital. So, mm. very interesting. Thank you very much. Good to know. What uh, the wheelbarrow boys doing under the leadership, of course, with uh, the president uh, Chone Vakasa uh, 12 years ago. That's uh, a long time. So, what made him think about uh, doing the wheelbarrow business? I want to so he's saying, uh, Luis, before he started off with uh, this wheelbarrows association, mm-hmm. there were uh, those who were already uh, doing wheelbarrowing in town. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah, so yes. Yeah, like he, he sort of made it organized, yes. I think. Yeah? So when he saw them at that time, mm. at that time they were like being let down, you know, being looked down by, uh, public. by, by the public. Mm. So he thought of starting this association so that the association as a whole, mm. you know, tries to, mm. to have something there with them. Yes. You know, try to gain respects mm-hmm. and all the uh, other, other things that they go through. Mm. So he actually respected the work that they did, but he wanted to make it in a more organized structure. Maybe yes. you can tell him that. Yes. 
Yes. So he had uh, actually known that they were doing good work for the community, but people still looked down on them. Yes. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so we'll uh, probably talk about now. Okay, you've got 100 members. Approximately how much a day is a wheelbarrow boy able to earn? Oh, that's an yeah. early start. Okay, yeah. yes. One o'clock on the 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 one o'clock on they all, uh, you bar boys, as we say, yeah? yes. They all have different descriptions. Okay. So he starts every morning at four o'clock in the morning yeah. till nine o'clock. Imagine o four in the morning. So okay, uh, you can continue from there. Okay, he starts four in the morning. So he is serving uh, which people at four in the morning? You think we know what we're talking about? We know what we're talking about. Ina kau te usar nga bir na ando bulte ka kana pus pus nga kudru mo yeri ka. Ano mo mo te usar mo iba kau te gina na nra. So at 4 a.m. in the morning, he starts at uh, those small kiosks, the restaurants that uh, alongside the market, beside the market police post. Yes. He starts off there taking off the garbage, the rubbish and all, and then he jumps on the other side of uh, the market eh? uh, where they sell socks and that's where he starts as well at four o'clock in the morning eee, so at four o'clock in the morning till nine o'clock then he goes on a break there so from four to nine he eee. earns around twenty dollars okay four to nine four o'clock in the morning till nine a.m nine a.m because uh, how much does he charge for a run Mm. Mm. So there are certain places where they charge three dollars, mm -hmm. and there are certain places where they charge uh, four dollars. So it depends on the distance. Oh, mm. I see. Depends on the distance. Yes. Okay, so that's five hours that he makes twenty dollars. That's and not much. That's not much. And then he comes again at four o'clock in the afternoon. Till 6 p.m. Okay, so how much can he make? Can he make more than what he makes from 4 a.m. to 9 a.m. at that time from the afternoon? He can earn another $15 in the afternoon. Oh, okay. Well, um, that's uh, actually, um, that's, that's, that's to me a bit of a struggle. But we'll get back to that on Speak Your Mind, Gold FM, only the classic hits. Do stay with us if you can. Speak your mind on Gold FM, only the classic hits. Thank you a lot for your company. Our guest today is the president of the Wheelbarrow Boys Association, Choneva Kasa, who's been sharing about uh, the work that the Wheelbarrow Boys have been doing. Now, interesting that we spoke uh, about the money that he can earn, yeah. which is from 4 a.m. to 9 a.m., $20, and then $15 from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. My question is, is uh, well, probably because of his age that uh, he's making around uh, 35 a day. Maybe, uh, and then can you continue to ask him, what about the other boys? What do they average as uh, pay a day or what from their earnings of being a wheelbarrow boy? 
so gele ya dobo chuna wa vitu asan ga roni wot di masabulan do e o sangan do batarungi ra wali wonda ka ora ora tambul tin plani no batarungi so ndra tun ndra ndra za ka ka chunga mena ka ga ora tu chuwa te ni ro te chuna bulan ni no to bulan biengo ben na go wali so he is mentioning uh, louis that at this age is this is what he's earning 35 dollars a day okay. but for the rest of the the wheelbarrow boys uh, most of them they earn more Mm. because of the mobility they they strong they can do more work than him yes. so some of the wheelbarrow boys in a car itself or a truck itself when they come to the market mm. just unloading they can earn around 50 dollars just from that one truck yes oh that's pretty yes, good just see from that one truck that mm. comes to the market to sell yes so for him this is what he can earn yeah, he, which is not too bad if you bad, yes. calculate 35 mm. how many days do you work Monday to Saturday. Oh, okay, that's uh, not too bad. So you just pace in yourself, and uh, does he survive well with uh, the money that he earns? So whatever he gets in that week, he budgets it very well, school, and also for their daily lives and their daily living. Yeah. Oh, that's great to know. So. Uh, well, I will go on to the next uh, question about, uh, okay, uh, let's uh, just ask uh, how often and for how many hours does a wheelbarrow boy work? With an hour, you can work in the end of the day. In a car, you can work in the end of the day. You can work in the end of the day. You can work in the end of the day. You can work in the end of the day. You can work in the end of the day. You can work in the end of the day. You can work in the end of the day. They work 24 hours. They work 24 hours every day, but it depends on the wheelbarrow itself. If he wanna works for that long hours, it depends on him. If he wanna earn more, yeah. he'll work for more hours. Right. So to them, they, they don't have a, a time whereby, you know, or like a rostered time. Mm. So they work 24 hours. It depends on each person mm. how many hours he can work for. Okay. The more hours you work for, the more money you get at the end of the day. Okay. Can you please ask him, uh, is being a wheelbarrow boy uh, a job uh, which uh, I would say, okay, is it a struggle to be a wheelbarrow boy? Ndondondondondondondondondondondondondondondondondondondondondondondondondondondondondondondondondondondondondondondondondondondondondondondondondondondondondondondondondondondondondondondondondondondondondondondondondondondondondondondondondondondondondondondondondondondondondondondondondond
Kerana rembo wasuri ni, labet wasuri naga. Ini kerana ni aduh bikin dengar badal kah, na makin tangan ni. Ni aduh bikin dengar badal kah. Si kerana ni kebukai antar libu cikgu. Ini labet wasuri rendi. Bun nanti tumbi tumbi bukan lagi subuh na. Yeah. The reason being why the OHS told them to carry only 15 kg is, you know, something might happen to them. They can feel sick. They can get sick, or they can faint if. You know, they've been awake throughout the night or they've been working long hours. Mm. So that's why the OHS department has told them only 15 kg. So do the wheelbarrow boys, or well, like you've said, yes. some want to make more, you know, some, they go out of their way yes. to do that. But uh, ask him, do you think that that's right? They should go more than 15 kg or should they stick to the 15 kg per wheelbarrow? And then don't make a mere to Nala Civita and I live in Nicamer to Bilinga and the Tinkalim Kilos, a Sar Pier to Nasa Tinkalim Kilos, a mere to Tostalida. And Allah were to Vitamina OHS, I will be getting only to Nari the Kai, you're not to Guinea, Ratum. To get to the two non Robocate, Kakanabuta, Limon of Ocate, Juana Tangatevo, Runa Tangatevo, Sitina Tangatevo, it to the Kavaka Gitu no Kutu Valley, as Andona Lavoli was on Vikitu. Itu sama juga kalau begini, begitu satu orang apa dia lihat, naga ni batu enggak biru, pasir biru naya. Some customers when they have more than 15 kg of items to be loaded, they just want to load it all at one time, because you know some customers they they don't want to make two or three trips. Yeah, but obviously because they have to pay more money. Pay more money, yes. But they're not thinking of the welfare of the wheelbarrow boy. So well, we'll get back to this topic when we come back soon on Speak Your Mind Gold FM only the classic hits. Speak your mind on Gold FM, only the classic hits. I do hope you're enjoying the show. And uh, we have the president of the Wheelbarrow Association, mm -hmm. Johnny Vacasa, mm -hmm. who is sharing with us uh, everything that we need to know about the struggles that wheelbarrow boys have to face in their lives. And not only that, they've been so helpful to the community, catching thieves, helping sick people. And uh, it's quite disappointing, Pena, that, uh, you know, people actually demand them to lift uh, the heavier than 15 kg. I think that's uh, a bit selfish because, I mean, it's for, obviously, the wheelbarrow boy's health. So can you ask Chone, tell him what I said, and also ask him to just uh, let the public know, you know, why, why you should... Just be willing to pay that extra. What is it? Two bucks? No, I don't know. 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 I don't Merakilati kwa naimna kini nimo ni ndoto kwenye vira, meli tala ngango le sumenge meko tala kongo. Ina kwa wapi na wali wana wili sna kwa mikoa bata kwa itaupiana. Wapi na wiki wuni na lioni wana wako ni ni ndoto banga taka chuna mbili mbara, banga taka jira chuna dharo ndoto mbili mbara. Wapi na taka ni banga taka chuna nimo ni lava nimo ni ngona, ni na nimo ni ngole mwe na maketi nimo ni banga banga taka chuna banga taka jira ndoto dharo ndoto mbili mbara. So nimo ndoto mbili mbili na kako raba usana na dharo ndoto mbili mbara. Dua bina wikim ni isu wikim ni dua sudah tu lima enam dolar, so sudah tu fitu enam dolar. Nah kaya lain bulan yang nombor ibu balik ni, lain tunggu lain lain bulan terlebih yang nombor ibu balik. Biar nombor ibu untuk mungkin barai raya bulan ramu ramu hari sangat terlalu cuma ibu bina. Kamu lihat nombor ibu balik yang nombor besi yang lima tak. Bawa itu betul yang nombor bina kali wikim ni nombor enam jin dan nombor mikir yang nombor ibu untuk mungkin beli barai na ragi pisau tahu nombor tu yang nasi nga bungin butoh yang nombor tu tak tak boleh ramu ni market terlebih su. We like to take this time, uh, Louis, to mm. thank uh, the citizens yes. of Fiji for choosing them as you know, to, to, or as the mean of transportation from one shop uh, to the other, yes. and uh, for helping them put food on the family table, yes. and also for thinking about them every time they come to the city, even though they have less items, mm. but then they think of them, their family, mm. their children. They tend to use them uh, to help them out. Yes. Some 
if there's three dollars of, uh, of of uh, the trip, one trip, mm. they give more. Some give five dollars, some give seven dollars, some even give oh, ten dollars. That's mm. nice. Mm. See, so, I mean, that's a good people that we should have more of. Mm. Yes, because uh, obviously he said it's a, a really hard job. Okay. Yes, it is. Yes. Okay. So uh, that's what he wants the people to know that he's grateful when uh, they mm. actually go out of their way to give them that bit of extra money. Mm. Okay, so uh, being a wheelbarrow boy, I mean, I wouldn't call uh, our friend uh, Chone a boy, mm. but um, I mean, obviously, he has been through the struggles, mm. but he looks pretty fit for his <laughs> age <laughs> eh, because of uh, pushing the wheelbarrow, I'm sure. Well, those from Lao, they're always fit. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, so um, what is his passion as uh, the president of the Wheelbarrow Association? His view of the uh, the Wilbur Association, Association in the few years to come mm. is uh, the plea. Eh? They've got pleas uh, to different uh, government ministries if they can help and support them, uh, especially the Ministry of Youth and uh, Tourism that they've been working closely together with mm -hmm. uh, in providing them reflectors mm -hmm. uh, and also raincoats. So all of them got reflectors now? Do you have a reflector? So what reflect the way class at the can chat or Okay, so they obviously need yeah. of uh, some the new ones. Yeah, new ones okay. Some of the reflectors are fading away and right. uh, some are getting old because of uh, the rain and also the heat from the sun. Okay, right. So they they need more help uh, and assistance from not only a government organization but non government organizations as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, you know, I would say their job is a very important job. And uh, maybe you can uh, ask him uh, to just to explain that I'm saying that their job is a very good job because it's helping the public. I mean, what about if there weren't any wheelbarrow boys at all? Mm. You know, can you maybe? Uh, เออบางบีบีตัวนี้บอกเลยว่าเราเรียนรู้ว่าเราไม่ตัวนี้บอกเลยว่าเราเรียนรู้ตัวนี้บอกเลยว่าเราเรียนรู้ตัวนี้บอ
Indonesia mana eksisten, wajah wajah tu mungkin orang bule tegi juga. Eh, tuh nandol eh. Bisa sih biar mana pastiin, bisa sih biar mesang mulai tu bangku bisan terang tak sebab nunggu sal, asa apa nandol. Oh iya. Jadi betul bapa tegi nak laku ilom eh. Yes, okay. Well, um, that's well deserved, I reckon. Mm -hmm. So, um, thank you very much. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. we've uh, come to the end of the interview, mm -hmm. but uh, hopefully now that uh, people will realize the struggle of the wheelbarrow boys mm -hmm. and uh, give them lots of tips. Vinaka <laughs> Vakalevu, <laughs> the president of the Wheelbarrow Association, Chone Vakasa, and uh, also our interpreter, Bula FM's Pena Ranima. Thank you so much for helping out. On Speak Your Mind, I hope you enjoyed the program. Please think of the Wheelbarrow Boys next time you go to the market and give them a tip. Thank you.